Hello and welcome to another Kit Plus TV show supported by Media Proxy. Now, we don't need to tell anyone here that interest in virtualized media production has exploded in the last couple of years. It was happening anyway, but the recent acceleration in the need of combining on-premise facility and cloud processing, enabling remote work and resource sharing has been at the center of business planning for the future. Yeah, in September 2020, Sony announced that it was acquiring Nevion to enhance its portfolio of end-to-end -end IP cloud-based production solutions. So just after one year into this investment, we're wondering how things are going for Nevion and what might have happened since. Please welcome Olivier Suard from Nevion to tell us a little bit more. Hi, Olivier. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you guys. So firstly, Olivia, for those that may not have come across Nevion before, can you give us a brief outline of the services and solutions that you offer? Sure. So, so Nevion's been in business uh, just over a quarter of a century. Uh, we celebrated our 25 years in business last year. Um, and we started out in Norway many, many years ago. And I would say back then we were specializing in, uh, in transport of media, video, audio, and associated data. Um, but as the IP uh, revolution came along, uh, we were one of the early adopters there. And um, we, we really saw how IP was not just another technology, but actually a transformational technology. And as a result, the business we're in now is, is really about enabling completely new workflows by connecting resources, equipment, locations, people together to create uh, what we see as um, a new form of production, a distributed production where everything is shared regardless of the location. What, does, what do I, as a, as a content creator or content owner, depending on you know, which type of solution, what, what do I need to, need to start integrating your solutions? Is it, do I need a particular hardware investment? Is it just software? Is it just an internet connection? What do I need? <laughs> you need us. <laughs> what's it all, or should I say, what's a typical setup then? Where's the typical starting point? Yeah. Well, well it, it's quite difficult to say what is typical and what isn't typical. Um, we <laughs> have uh, we have opportunities with customers that are very simple, involving one piece of product or or, or uh, an upgrade to something they already have. Um, but in a way, the business that we're seeing a lot of is is this transformational business that I was talking about. So it's essentially right. broadcasters, or in some cases, telcos coming to us and saying, I want to use IP, but not just to do the same thing as I've been doing with uh, SDI, but I actually want to transform the way I want to do my business. So as a result, what we're offering, we're offering obviously uh, products, solutions, but as part of those solutions, we also have a fair amount of services, particularly consultancy and uh, support and deployment and support and all these sort of things. So there's 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 a, a mixture of things, um, but I would say almost in these transformational projects, the the biggest thing that that we and indeed Sony bring to the to the to the story is actually that experience and that expertise in in transforming businesses through IP. Mm. But in terms of products, uh, we we within Nevion have two flagship products. Uh, we have one called Virtuoso, which is a software defined media node. Um, that's essentially, in the olden days, you might have called that a gateway, but it's more of a, it's more of a multi-purpose piece of the equipment, which has software running on it that will make it do all sorts of things. Uh, from encoding to, to firewalling, etc. And then the other product that we have that is our other flagship product is Video iPath, which is a orchestration and SDN control software. So really, that's really the brains that's connecting all those flows between the various locations, the various pieces of equipment, etc. Mm. Yeah. So what are the um, typical problems that your customers were having before they met you? Well, uh, <laughs> that, that's interesting. So obviously, we have the, uh, the the business problems, which are essentially, I think they're known to everybody that uh, broadcasting is facing immense competition, not just from other broadcasters, but also yeah, from yeah. from eyeballs, uh, from pe for, for, for people's eyeballs in the terms of, uh, you know, they're competing against social media, they can 
competing against uh, user generated content. They're competing against gaming. They're competing about against so many things. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's been a trend effectively where um, there is a need for broadcasters to produce a lot more content, a much more compelling content, particularly live content, because that's something that's very compelling and also very uh, temporal. Uh, live content means bringing people at a particular time in front of the, the television or their devices. So they need to, co to create more of that, but because of the competition, they also need to do it more <clears throat> cost effectively. And that's the bottom line of what what is driving a lot of those decisions that we're seeing in transforming people's businesses. Um, when it comes to the practicality of using IP networks to transform a business, um, I think most broadcasters have a good idea of the potential of, of the, the, the technology. Uh, we were at the forefront of describing that uh, six, seven years ago. Um, but uh, in a way, they're lacking the the depth of experience uh, and expertise yeah. that we are exposed to because we are doing projects all the time, small ones, big ones, uh, multinational projects, yeah. uh, transcontinental projects. Uh, and that's an experience and an expertise that that is very difficult to get outside of the industry. So, so in a way, the biggest problem that our customers are having, apart from their business problems, are actually how do they get the most out of the IP technology and how do they get that experience and expertise? And that's what they're coming to us for. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, I mean, we yeah, covered a little bit of the, the, the customer type things. I'd like to find out a little bit more about how you're getting on. It's been, what, 12 months since you were uh, uh, brought into the Sony family, shall we say, the Sony group of companies. How are you settling in? How are you fitting into the whole Sony workflow now after that period of time? Well, um, we were formally acquired on um, in October 2020. So it's uh, one and a half years or so. But actually, yeah, we, yeah. we announced a, um, a close collaboration, a strategic partnership over a year before that. So in July 2019, if I recall correctly. So, so we had a whole year of uh, dating, if you want, <laughs> until we, we actually formally got married uh, about 18 months ago. So, so it's been very much a, um, an approach of getting to learn each, um, learn about each other. And, and really what led to, to, to their acquisition was really the, the, the realization that we had a lot in common. And also a lot of complementary um, products, but also experience and expertise. Um, so, so it's it's not been a, a, an overnight, um, um, you know, surprise to everybody. It's been a a long running relationship. So, in terms of settling in, um, we've literally been working at every level, from from the management level to uh, development, to sales, to marketing, to delivery, to support, um, with our colleagues in, in Sony across the world. Um, and, and it's been working quite well. Obviously, we have different ways of doing things. Um, so there's a lot of learning about each other and how we do, uh, how we do things. Um, and also, we have uh, Different experiences and different approaches to things. So it's been a, it's been a, a, a good journey in terms of learning about yeah. each other. Mm. I would say, um, obviously, all this, pretty much all of it, uh, happened under the uh, under the uh, in the shadow of the pandemic, which uh, has not made things easy. Um, we've not been able to meet face to face with most of our colleagues. Um, we do a lot of work with our colleagues in Japan, for example, and uh, these poor guys often have to uh, stay up late to be able to uh, take part in meetings with uh, with us in Europe. Um, but it's worked remarkably well, considering we've not been able to to meet and 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 do had to do everything electronically. Um, it's been a brave step in a way to to engage in in this uh, in this relationship, given that. This happened during the pandemic, but it's worked out well. So, so I would say overall, yeah. very positive. 
Yeah, well, let, let, let's hope 2022 gives us that opportunity to get face to face. Just so we can understand um, the sort of like the range that your technology is used on, can you give us an idea of the the largest project and the smallest project where Nevin, Nevion technology has been deployed in recent times? Oh, in recent times, um, I, the, I guess. There are, we, we do a lot of projects with very high profile um, sports events. Um, and you can think of a few from uh, 2020. Well, they were scheduled in 2020, happened in 2021. Um, unfortunately, we're not allowed to say what they were, but uh, I can tell you we're very actively involved in, in these very large sporting projects. Um, so I can't give you details, but they are they are pretty big. Um, I would say yeah. one of the one of the projects that is uh, w that is public out there um, that we've done that's in many ways one of the most uh, interesting and, and largest is with um, with uh, discovery in Europe, um, and yeah. that involved effectively creating two private clouds well we didn't create the private cloud but we provided the, the the connectivity um for all their production across europe and uh and that's been pretty challenging because of the scale about it's uh it's involving many hundreds of thousands of uh of um of flows of video flows uh it's across the continent so it's uh it's going across many hundreds even thousands of kilometers um and it's been it really has been a, a very interesting project but also a very uh, challenging project and i would say in terms of things like orchestrating uh, live production flows it has to be one of the biggest one in the world um so that's that's at one end um recently we did a project with um with uh, an ott um supplier in well based in the us but it's uh it it is everywhere it provides a video on demand to uh virtually every household <laughs> we've not announced it so i can't tell you who it is but you can imagine who it is um and and they had a, a an interesting project i mean it was it wasn't small 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 but is compared to, to for example something like discovery it was relatively small um they they had um they had offices in uh, in premium location in uh, in los angeles and that's where all the creatives are um but they also needed to use a lot of equipment um back-end processors etc cetera, etc cetera. and it was just very expensive to store all this back-end equipment in this premium location in uh, in in los angeles so um they decided to move uh, that out to a cheaper area within Los Angeles and just provide a remote connectivity uh, between those two. Um, and it's it's what you would almost call well, it's it's kind of a remote production. It's one of the um, one of the models for remote production. It comes back to like, efficiencies in business, doesn't it? Really. Um, so, as far as you know, yeah, the future. What. <laughs> My interest interest now is is sort of saying like okay you've you've, you've done a few of these things you've probably learnt quite a lot over the last couple of years. What do we th can we give us any clues to what the future might hold for 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 what you know what's coming up? What can we see in the future? Uh, for from Nevion, I guess you're talking Nevion and Nevion and yeah. Sony together. Nevion, yeah. Okay. really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so obviously from um, uh, one of the main drivers for Nevion. Uh, for 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 um, saying yes to Sony, I guess um, <laughs> was was really that uh, we we'd reached organically as far as we could go, certainly in terms of reach and and being able to to service customers across the world in 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 other locations. Um, so one of the things you're beginning to see now is is the Nevion products being marketing marketed via Sony or brought to the market and supported, et cetera, yeah. um, to a much broader audience and be able to uh, to provide that scale to our customers in a way that we just couldn't do as a, as a, a smaller entity as we were before. Um, so there's a, there's a practical aspect to our customers, which is uh, which you're going to see more of uh, our ability to 
to, to provide an even better service, etc. Um, we have been working also on our joint value proposition. So bringing together those, um, those complementary products, services, expertise, and know-how, um, and explaining how that can be, uh, how that can be used and how that can be used as part of the IP transformation of, uh, of, uh, of a broadcaster or our customers in general. Yeah. And then in practical terms, obviously, we are doing work together, uh, developing yeah. uh, our products um, further. We have, uh, we have expertise, for example, Cerny has expertise in certain aspects of, uh, of, uh, of production that we simply don't have. We have an understanding, but we, we're not yeah. the deep experts. And now we're able to tap into that expertise to enhance some of our existing products. So our two flagship products, uh, Virtuoso and Video iPath, are benefiting from from the know-how that we're getting through through Sony. So I think you can look forward to, uh, as I said, reach better uh, better proposition yeah. for for our customers, as well as as uh, as deeper um, capabilities of our actual products. Brilliant. Thank you, Olivia. It's been uh, it's been really interesting talking to you, and uh, yeah, obviously good. lots yeah. lots to look forward to. I'm guessing the website will be nevion.com. Yeah, it is nevion.com, uh, and of course, you can also find it on the on the Sony uh, Pro website as well, because we are we are connecting as well. So uh, you'll find details there um, if you if you want to come through through the Sony uh, website. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Olivia. Do make sure you pop over to their website for more information. Uh, thanks, of course, to Media Proxy for their support, Kit Plus TV, and thank you for watching. Don't forget, of course, to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to listen to these on the move, you can find the podcasts on your preferred podcast directory or kitplus.com forward slash podcast. We'll see you next time.